what it's done. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for tuning in today. I felt like this video was almost necessary because every day we are seeing new product launches, new brand launches, and I know I'm definitely guilty of going along with the flow. It is so fast of all these new brands coming up with new things all the time, and you can definitely get sucked into buying all the new things, being excited about new launches, but sometimes I like to take a step back and think, is it really worth my money while I actually use it? And so I thought doing an anti-haul would be really helpful because you just see so many hauls going around and you see so many different launches going around and things that you should be buying, but is it really worth it? Is it worth your time and money? Is there something else that you could be putting that money towards? Like me and Dave are planning a few different vacations and I'd much rather save my money for those rather than just buying a trendy makeup item. So this is going to be an anti-haul where I talk about the things that that I have definitely contemplated and then decided against and we're just gonna get into it I'd love to know what are some things that you were originally thinking about but getting and then decided you know what I'm just gonna hold off and just save for something else that you really truly want to buy so let's start off with the Ciate Glitter Flips, those are gorgeous. I'm sure you've seen so many different videos about how they change from a metallic lip to a glitter lip. It's definitely a really cool product, but I know myself and I would probably use it a few times and then forget about it once the trend was over. So it's definitely something that is almost not gimmicky, but something that is definitely so trendy but I don't see it being a very long trend. I don't like having glitter on my lips. I don't like having dry lips. So in all, they're gorgeous to look at, but is it actually something that I would use? Probably not. Also, the Kat Von D Glimmer Lips in the same ballpark. I am just not a glitter lip person, and they, again, look beautiful, but it's one of those trends that will definitely fly by, and then you'll have a whole mixture of glitter lips that you're never going to use it or you'll only use it maybe a few times a year. So it's just not something that is practical in my everyday makeup routine. Also from Kat Von D, the Saint and Sinner palette, even though I'm sure it's beautiful, I just don't enjoy that bulky packaging. It's a little awkward for me. It's definitely not my style. And you'll probably see a trend where I've I've accumulated quite a few makeup palettes in the past few months. I've gotten a ton from work, got some from gratis, and I, uh, I don't need any at the moment, but Urban Decay Heat Palette is gorgeous, but for me, a, this was something that I was con considering buying because I was really looking for a good warm palette, and at the time, the Sephora Pro palettes were also launching, so you guys know I did purchase that instead, mostly because the colors in the Urban Decay for me were too similar. There wasn't a huge variety for me and I just couldn't think of a ton of looks. I could think of a few looks, but I couldn't think of a ton of looks and I really wanted something that was really versatile. And so that's why I ended up going with the Sephora Pro palette in Warm versus the Naked Heat. I just feel like even though it was a little bit more expensive, I can create a ton of different looks like my juices are always flowing with it where it felt like I would be easily stuck with the Urban Decay Heat palette. Let's talk about Too Faced for a second because they are coming out with so many things. Um, you know there's going to be some uh, holiday launches for them. They just launched the um, Peaches and Cream line and they just launched the Candy Johnson line. And honestly, I have no interest in either collection and I really don't have interest in their holiday stuff either. I feel like their palettes are almost just like rotating through. Their palettes aren't really very unique. And I feel like once you have one or two, you really don't need more. I haven't really seen the Candy Johnson line, but the Peaches and the Cream launched at Sephora. And the only things that really do spark my interest is the bronzer and the primer. But I know myself, and I don't go through bronzers all that quickly. I only have a few in my collection that I truly love. So that's one of those products that I may have to finish something first before I go and purchase it. Also, the whole collection of the Peaches and Cream does, isn't my smell. I actually prefer the stronger smell, but I feel like the new smell in the new line isn't the same and it doesn't get me excited. Especially having that type of fragrance on my face really makes me nervous. This is a lot of reasons why I am passing on the Too Faced. I think they're just launching way too many things at one time because there was just so much, th so many things, but nothing was really creative or unique that I was just like, you know what, nope, I'm gonna pass because it's just another Too Faced item. So. 
Moving on to the plethora of full coverage matte foundations that are launching. There have been, I feel like, one a week for the past two months at Sephora. So there's the YSL one, there's Laura Mercier, there's Bare Minerals. They had a couple stick foundations like Sephora and NARS. Um, and there's just so many of them. And I am someone who does not like a matte foundation. I don't like having full coverage most days and I just have no interest in running out the door and buying a new foundation. Again, just not my cup of tea. Uh, if you are looking for something like that, I really love the Laura Mercier on p other people, but for me it's just it's not what I liked to my skin to look like. The next product is the Tarte Clay Play Palette. This smells amazing, and if there was one palette that I'm contemplating on, it probably would be this one, but I know myself, and all matte palettes I just don't touch. I don't know why, I really just prefer having a variety of different textures. I love shimmer eyeshadows. I don't even care about the rule where you can put, you're not supposed to use it in your crease. I don't mind because I just love the feel and texture of them. So for me, I have a couple of all matte palettes in my collection and I don't touch them. Very rarely do I actually pull them out and I always feel like I have to add other palettes in to create a look that I like to wear. So. That is why I am passing on that, even though it's beautiful and it smells amazing. One thing that I've been on the fence on, I've definitely been like, oh, I love them, oh, I think it's way too much money, is the Hourglass Confection, the Slim Lipsticks, the one that in the gold tube, and you can like interchange the lipstick inside. And the initial set with the casing is what, $34? And then the lipsticks for the refill are $22. And even though they are gorgeous, they're so comfortable, they are really long wearing. I wear them all the time at work, but I can't justify the price. They are so small in product that you're going to be replacing them really quickly, and I just don't think the money for the product is up there. I really wish they were bigger, or I really wish the price was a lot lower, because I just can't justify the price for that small of a product. And then finally... The new Smashbox Nude Lips, I know they're coming out with a whole bunch of different nude colors and even though I love that formula, after finishing one of them, they go really quickly and for the price, you are getting half the product of most other liquid lipsticks that are on the market. So for me, I am in love with the uh, NARS Power Mats. And I have one already, I have a couple in my wish list, and those are ones that are beautiful, they are long wearing, they feel like nothing on the lips, but you get so much more product compared to the Smashbox ones. Like if you actually look at the ounces, the Smashbox ones I think have half the amount of product compared to all the other liquid lipsticks that we have at Sephora, so that is why I'm not going to get that. So that is just my quick little video of things that I'm not going to purchase in and the reason why and I hope this helped you to just like take a moment to like take a pause take a step back and see is it really something that I want or is it just something that is passing is it something I'm actually going to use is it worth my time and money is it worth me taking money out of like a savings fund or however you purchase your makeup but actually just take a step back and think about it before just running out and buying the next new thing so I hope this video was helpful thank you guys so much for watching if you are new here I do launch videos every Monday and Thursday and that's all I have for you guys today and I will see you guys real soon bye